Shalom family, it is your sister in Christ, Lady Summer, coming to you with another word from the Holy Spirit. And actually today, this message is all about the Holy Spirit. It's been raining since 8 a.m. this morning, continuously, it hasn't stopped. There are no winds, but it is a little humid, um very reminiscent of my summers in the south in Louisiana or Louisiana in Texas what we called Indian summers but I'm in the midst of a tropical storm and all the while that it is pouring out I've been worshiping and praising the Lord and he gave me a beautiful word and the title of this message is Ruach HaKadosh, the Almighty, and the third Godhead, Ruler and King. Today on the Gregorian calendar, it is Sunday, August 20th, 2023. But on the biblical calendar, God's calendar, it is Elul 3. Remember, Elul means I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. And we are in the time of the 49th weekly Torah portion, 49, the seven weeks. The name of the reading or the Parsha is Kedazi. And I'm pretty positive I'm probably saying it wrong, so I'm going to spell it. It's two words, K-I, second word, T-E-I-T-Z-E-I. It's Hebrew for when you go out and it is found in deuteronomy 21 21 the three sevens and verse 10 10 represents god said and god's law and order his completeness it's also his perfect number and it is mentioned 242 times in the bible and it has a special meaning of authority completeness of order and responsibility in its original meaning it indicates union and collection like gathering and for this reason the number is regarded as meaning holiness something holy enough as a whole that whatever God creates becomes a resting place for his presence the Shekinah glory with this in mind, we find two factors of the number 10 are the number 4 and 6. 4 is the number of physical creation, and it's also God's appointed times. And 6 is the number of man, as is mentioned in Genesis 1, which recounts the creation story and the phrase, God said 10 times. It's about God speaking to us. And one example is in Genesis 1, where it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Who is the R? Well, it's three Godheads. The Father, the Son, who is the Word, and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father. God's divine authority over creation and the holiness he placed on it is clearly indicated in this portion of scripture. Remember too, the Garden of Eden was a holy place God created as a place for Adam to interact with him physically. It was a place of union. Also, the number 10 has to do with tithing. And I haven't gotten to that um, message yet, but the Lord has been speaking to me about the daughters, you know, the new heaven, the new earth, but also about how Generation X became the tithe, the Lord's literal portion. But the Hebrew word for the number 10 is Esser. As written is very close to the word Asher, which means wealth. The connection is why some people believe 10 is the number for tithing in the scriptures like leviticus 27 32 and concerning the tithe of the herd or the flock or whatever passes under the rod the tenth one shall be holy 
to the Lord. Also in Deuteronomy 14, 22 through 23, you shall truly tithe all the increase of your grain that the field produces year by year, and you shall eat before the Lord your God in the place where he chooses to make his name abide. The tithe of your grain and your new wine and your oil of the firstborn of your herds and your flocks that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. I was actually the firstborn of my father and the firstborn daughter of my mother. I was born on Resurrection Sunday and the Lord told me I was born to live a holy life. Proverbs 3 9 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. This is why Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 instructs us on the importance of giving to others, that in our giving, God will bless us with a replenishment. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness for the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints but also is abounding through many thanksgivings to God. Again, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8, 10, and 12, which takes us back to our first scripture of the message. When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, and the Lord thy God have delivered them into thine hands, and thou hast taken them captive, and seest among the captives a beautiful woman, and has a desire unto her, that thou wouldest have her to thy wife, then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head, and pare her nails, and she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in thy house, and bewail her father and her mother a full month, and after that, Thou shalt go in unto her, and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. And it shall be, if thou have no delight in her, then thou shalt let her go whither she will. But thou shalt not sell her at all for money. Thou shalt not make merchandise of her, because thou hast humbled her. The laws that Moses wrote under the instruction of the Lord, they included the laws of the beautiful captive, the inheritance rights of the firstborn, the wayward and rebellious son, the burial and dignity of the dead, returning a lost object, sending away the mother bird before taking her young, the duty to erect a safety fence around the roof of one's home, and many more things. Back in 2018, when I learned God's calendar and I fasted for 40 days and nights and I was honoring the feast, the Holy Spirit began to pour out on me and I began to dream again and have divine encounters that I've never experienced in my life. I was scared to death, <laughs> um, a real fear, shaken, but I knew that it was God. And today being the 20th day on the Gregorian calendar, the Lord reminded me of how it was exactly 20 years later after my father passed that I heard his voice call my name. And he told me we were at war and to put on my marching boots. With this in mind, the Holy Spirit told me to look up the meaning of the Ruach HaKodesh. And that is today's topic and is today's study. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Because remember, he said he was the Lord. He was the Messiah. <laughs> the Father sent him. 
He said, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That was in John 14, verse 15 through 18. So it's like 2014 to 2018 for me. And it was in 2018 that I was touched. And I was caught up outside of my body. And a man's voice told me to wake up. John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So according to the Hebrew names for God, I looked up the Ruach HaKadosh and I found the titles for God, the Holy Spirit, as found in the Brit Kadasha, and it's listed in alphabetical order. The Brit Kadasha is the new covenant of Adonai. The New Testament is called the Brit Kadasha in Hebrew, meaning new covenant. The word Brit means covenant, and Kadasha means new, like the Tanakh. It can be divided into three main parts, the Gospels and the Acts, corresponding to Torah, letters corresponding to Ketavim, and revelation corresponding to Nevi'im, which are the written word and the spoken word. And the blessings that are recited for the Brit Kadasha are the Beatitudes of Jesus. And that is found in Matthew 5. And the Lord told me to do this the other day, but I believe I'm going to read Matthew chapter 5, as it is written in the sealed portion of the last testament of Jesus Christ, because it is changed in our Bible. This is why they're experiencing the curses right now, and why they're not going to receive the blessings, because they removed and they added. So I'm going to read it to you the way that it was said by Jesus. It's pretty long, but it's necessary. This is Matthew chapter 5. It says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain to teach unto them the things which the Father had commanded of him. And when he was set in the place where he would teach the people, he called forth his disciples, and they came unto him, that they might hear more clearly the things that he would command the people, so that they could teach these same things unto the people as they had been given authority to do. I pray you have ears to hear. <laughs> and after he had presented his disciples before the people, he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are ye if you shall give heed unto the words of these twelve, whom I have chosen from among you to minister unto you, and to be your servants, and unto them I have given power that they may baptize you with water if you repent and believe on the things which I shall give unto you from my Father. And after you are baptized with water, which is the covenant you shall make before God, that you shall do the things which I shall command you this day, behold, I will baptize you with fire and with the Holy Ghost, which shall cause you to know that the things that I shall give unto you are true. And this fire shall burn within you, giving you a remission of your sins by the peace that you shall find in your souls. For you are poor in spirit and seek for the kingdom of heaven. And it is this kingdom that I shall give unto you this day. Blessed are the poor in spirit who come unto me, and learn that which the Father hath given me for them. For their spirits shall be filled, and they shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
And again, blessed are they that mourn, because they seek for more righteousness, but cannot find it in the doctrines and precepts of men which they have been given. For they shall be comforted by the words which I give unto them this day. Blessed are the meek who seek to do the will of the Father in all things, for they shall inherit the earth that have been prepared for them. And blessed are they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness in meekness and lowliness of heart, for they shall be filled with the Holy Ghost who shall teach them all things. And blessed are the merciful who love others and extend to them no judgment for what they do, which is evil, for they shall obtain mercy for that which they do, which is evil. And blessed are all the pure in heart who in righteousness seek to know God and his ways, that they might understand truth and not to consume it upon their lust as they do who are impure. Behold, they shall know God. And blessed are the peacemakers who contend with no man over doctrine. Yea, these shall come to know the true doctrine, and then they shall be called the children of God. And blessed are they which are persecuted and mocked by others because of their righteous works, for they shall find their peace and happiness in the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely because of that which you do for my sake. Rejoice. And be exceeding glad in your persecutions and afflictions. For so persecuted they, the prophets, who were before you, who I sent unto the people to teach them these things. For your reward shall be given you from heaven by receiving peace and comfort from the Spirit of God. So we've already said three different names for the Holy Spirit just in this reading alone, but I'm going to keep going. Ye are the salt of the earth, even as you are given as examples unto all men of the peace that you receive from the Father. But if the salt have lost its savor, where would shall the earth be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out again into the earth from whence it came, and to be trodden under foot by men. For the Father will not have those whom he hath chosen give a false example of him. I am the light of the world that the Father hath given unto the world, that lieth in darkness. And he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. And you have been given me of the Father, therefore you also are the light of the world. And with the light that the Father hath given unto us, we shall be as a city of lights set on a hill that giveth light unto all the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid because it is in the view of all the world. And this is a prelude to Matthew 24 when he said, when you see the branches and the leaves and all that started to come out from the fig tree. <laughs> Therefore, men who have received light cannot hide it from the world. Neither do men light a candle and make a measure of that light unto others by putting it under a bushel. For the light cannot be measured to any man in a portion, but he put it on a candlestick so that all may partake equally thereof and it shall give light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before all men by the good works that you do because of the light that the Father have given unto you, that they might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law that has already been given you of Moses or of the prophets who have come before me, I'm not come to destroy the law or the prophecies, but to fulfill them every wit. 
For behold, the law of Moses and the prophets pointed all men to me, giving in darkness what you now see in the light. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, if it were possible, not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law which have been given till all be fulfilled. For this is the law and the prophets, even all the commandments that have been given by the Father, that you should worship God with all your heart, might, mind, and soul by keeping his commandments. And this is his commandments, that you do unto others what you would have them do unto you. And there shall be no more law given except those commandments that I give unto you this day. Whosoever therefore shall break any of these commandments that I give unto you and shall teach men to do so by his example, he shall in no wise be saved in the kingdom of heaven. For these commandments is the law that you shall also keep there. But whosoever shall do these commandments of the law until it be fulfilled and teach them, the same shall be called great and be saved in the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to stop right there. That's what I was doing in 2018, 2019. I literally was living under the law. I had put myself back under the law. I was living holy righteous, spirit-filled, walking in the word, speaking the word. And the Lord reminded me how I met him. I met him in my dreams. I had nightmares as a little girl. I was being chased. Hands were trying to pull me down to hell. I, you know, it was just, I had nightmares. They continued again. I, in 89 to 91, I was constantly seeing things blowing up and planes crashing into buildings and you know it was just a lot of stuff going on but every single time in the dreams that i called jesus's name he saved me even when i was going through my spiritual attacks having sleep paralysis being held down i'm awake and i can't get up <laughs> um is I was almost like I actually was smothered. Um, I saw this dark figure come towards me and he was smothering me and I literally called Jesus's name in my head and it stopped. He reminded me, I've been there from the beginning. I've always been with you. I've never left you. So evidently if I was having dreams and visions and all these attacks by the enemy, I must be the remnant, a seed chosen, called. And like I said on a previous post, I accept my calling. I told the Lord if he reversed my misery and gave me joy and gladness, I would serve him and do every single thing that he tells me to do. And that's what I've been doing. Back to the scripture and his verse 20, he says, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, which is the writers and the priests, because the Pharisees knew the word, they just didn't do it. He said, Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. For the scribes and the Pharisees sit in the seat of Moses, and teach the commandments, but they do not abide by them. And by their example, teach many to break these commandments. Therefore, I have said unto you that whosoever shall do these commandments and teach them shall be saved in the kingdom of heaven. And behold, I shall give unto you the law and the commandments of my father, and you shall believe in me and that you shall repent of your sins and come unto me with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, which, um, stop there again. My name means of the contrition. <laughs> wow. And it says, behold, you have the commandments already before you, and you must now know that in me is the new law 
fulfilled. Therefore come unto me and be you saved. For verily I say unto you that except you shall keep my commandments, which I have been commanded to give unto you at this time, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Behold, you have heard that it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. And this is the law that the scribes and Pharisees teach unto you, and which they do not understand. For they have said, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth, and that you shall stone and kill those who violate the law. But wherein shall the commandment be fulfilled if you kill him who have killed? Are not ye both then of the same sin? And I have always said that. I'm like, I don't want to be in favor of the death penalty. Because when they push the button, I'm going to be pushing the button too. No, thank you. But anyway, and I'm not saying that there are people who don't um, deserve death. But I know what Jesus said. So he says right here, But I say unto you, He that killeth in any manner, and for whatever reason, lieth in sin. And whosoever is angry with his brother for any reason shall be in danger of the same judgment, because the anger in his heart might lead to the death of his brother. And whosoever shall hold his brother in contempt or ridicule shall be in danger of the law that have been given by the counsel which rendereth the law. But whosoever shall say to his brother for any reason, for but whosoever shall say to his brother for any reason, Thou fool, shall be in danger of a hell like unto fire, which shall burn in his soul because of that which he thinkest of his brother. Therefore, if thou presentest thyself at the altar as a righteous offering to God. I'm going to read that again. Therefore, if thou presentest thyself at the altar... As a righteous offering to God. And there rememberest that thy brother have aught against thee because of that which thou hast done unto him. Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way until thou can offer up a gift in righteousness. And before thou offerest thyself as a gift to God, first be reconciled to thy brother. And then come and offer thy gift. Yea, be kind to thy brother, and respect the opinion of he who disgraceth with thee, and considereth thee his adversary, whilst thou art still in his good graces, that thou mightest remain in the way with him, lest at any time he who considereth thee an adversary causeth thee to sin. For in whatsoever sin thou shalt be found, thou shalt be delivered to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer and thou be cast into prison for i am thy righteous judge and by my words shall thou be judged you see there i told you he told me his his word is the judge but here it is they took it out of your bible listen for i am thy righteous judge and by my words shall thou be judged and if it so be that thou hast offended thy brother in anger, thou shalt not be delivered from the anguish of thy soul until thou hast suffered for that which thou hast done. This is the state in which thou shalt find thyself in the kingdom of my father, and this state is like unto a prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing behold you have heard that it was said by your leaders that they of old time commanded thou shall not commit adultery but the scribes and pharisees have given you their unrighteous example in this thing because they look upon women and lust after them having many concubines and wives justifying their wickedness by them of old time but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Therefore your leaders have caused you to err because of their examples. You look at them as your guides who have eyes that see for you and hands that do for you. 
that which you believe God have commanded of them. For you have seen of the Jews that those who are their leaders, who lead them and are their standard, do mislead them and cause them to sin before the Father and disobey his commandments. And it is better that a man have no leader than be led into the same hell with his leader whom he have made his standard. And if thy eye which see it for thee, even him that is appointed to watch over thee, to show thee light, becometh a transgressor and offend thee, pluck him out. For it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. For it is better that thyself should be saved than to be cast into hell with thy leaders where their worm dieth not and where the fire is not quenched. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it also off and cast it from thee. For the works that thy leaders do by their unrighteous example causeth thee to stumble in darkness. For it is more profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, in that thou leavest those who do the works of God for thee, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. It have been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. And this they have said to justify the lust that they have for another woman, who is not their wife, thinking that with a divorcement they shall be free of sin. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, so that he might be justified in the lust of his heart and his fornication, have committed adultery, and is not free from sin because of the covenant that he made with his wife. And whosoever shall marry her that is not divorced, committed adultery. And this I say because your leaders justify themselves in their lust for women who are not their wives, but condemn those caught in fornication who are not married by their laws. Again, you have heard that it have been said by them that they of old time commanded, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. And this they have said unto you, that they might keep you in bondage to them who have set themselves upon the throne of God. But I say unto you, make no oaths to any man and forswear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne upon which only he can perform his oaths and your leaders cannot perform his oaths in unrighteousness upon this earth, nor should you forswear yourselves by the earth for it is his footstool where his oaths shall be fulfilled, even as I am here to fulfill them. Neither should you forswear yourselves by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king who is not of heaven, but is here now upon the earth to fulfill all things sworn by the Father. Neither shall thy by thy head Commit thyself to any matter, because thou canst not make one hair of thy head white or black. But let your communication among each other be, yea, yea, this I can do, or nay, nay, this I cannot do. For whatsoever is more than these can cause evil. Again, you have heard that it have been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, doing unto another what he have done unto you. But I say unto you that you shall not resist this evil that another doeth unto you, because I have commanded you to do unto another what you would want him to do unto you. And you would not want to lose an eye if yours was taken, or a tooth if one was lost by the hand of another. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also, that he might see thy love for him and stop that which he doeth unto thee. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, do not fight for that which he desireth of thee, but let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain, showing that your love is greater than the vengeance of him who compelleth thee to do a thing against thy will. If thou hast that which thou canst give, 
then give to him that asketh of thee. And from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away, lest he esteem thee as his enemy. You have heard that it have been said of your leaders that you shall love your neighbor who is like unto you and believeth as you believe and that you should hate your enemy and cast him out from among you even he that doth not believe as you believe that you be not misled by the hand of the enemy but i say to you love your enemies bless them that curse you do good to them that hate you and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you that you may become the children of your father who is in heaven who is no respecter of persons for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust all being his beloved children for if you love only them who love you what reward have you of your father in heaven do not even the publicans do the same and you know that they are wicked, yet your father loveth them. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than the others who you condemn as sinners? Do not even the publicans so salute only those who are their friends? Behold, those things which were of old time, which were under the law, that you have been taught by your leaders in me are all fulfilled. And for this reason have the Father sent me to you, that you might repent and do the works that I have commanded you to do and follow the example that I have given unto you, that you might therefore be commanded to be perfect in the love that you have for one another, even as your Father, which is in heaven, have a perfect love for you. Isaiah 45 says, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob my servant's sake and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things things verses 2 through 7 jesus said if you abide in me and my words abide in you you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you john 15 7 so the first form of the holy spirit is the comforter and the helper that i read in john 14 26 and john 15 26 the next name is Eternal Spirit, the Ruach Olam, that is mentioned in Hebrews 9.14. I'll start at verse 13. It says, For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the Eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God? Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. See, it's your faith in God that touches God and allows you to receive from him. This is why Peter said, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. See, he was a Jew. He converted to being a Christ follower. He said, be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. This was referring to what Jesus said that I read earlier. Now I'm with you, but later I'll be in 
you. This was the Holy Spirit, as we read in the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, that enters in to all holy souls. That was Acts 3, 19 and 20. And that again, 2019, 2020. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and have raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's why Jesus was saying, I'm in the world, but not of it. That in the ages to come, which is where we are, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace you are saved through faith, your belief, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, verse 4 through 10. So when I looked up that word Kadesh, um, because, you know, we have the Rosh Kadesh, which deals with God's calendar, you know, celebrating the first two days of the month. It's always been the time, seemingly since my first divine encounters, it's always been during that time, the Rosh Kadesh, uh, the first two days of the month or some triple holiday or holy day. But the word Kadesh comes from strong 6944 it means consecrated a consecrated thing dedicated dedicated gifts dedicated things holiness holies holy ones holy portion holy things most holy most holy place just like in daniel most holy things sacred gifts sacred things sacrifices set apart sanctuary Things most holy, things that are most holy. Again, things dedicated. It says hollow thing, most holy day. Again, portion, thing, and saint. So the word ruach comes from Strong 7307. And listen to what it means. Spirit, breath. Then it means this. It says ruach. A primitive root meaning, listen, to smell like a sweet savor. And the Lord gave me this morning the book of Jubilees, chapter 2, starting at verse 23. And it talks about Jacob and his seed always being blessed and being the holy ones. This is the tribe of Israel, but also the woman Israel, because the woman Israel and also the bride that comes down in Revelation 21 is the Ruach HaKadosh. It's the Holy Spirit. Same woman mentioned she, the Lord our righteousness in Jeremiah 33, the Ruach HaKadosh. It says, and I have chosen the seed of Jacob from amongst all that I have seen and have written him down as my firstborn son and have sanctified him unto myself forever and ever and I will teach them the Sabbath day that they may keep Sabbath thereon from all work and thus he created therein a sign in accordance with which they should keep Sabbath with us on the seventh day to eat and to drink and to bless him who has created all things as he has blessed and sanctified unto himself a peculiar people above all peoples and that they should keep Sabbath together with us. And he caused his commands to ascend as a sweet savor acceptable before him all the days. There were two and 20 heads of mankind from Adam to Jacob and two and 20 kinds of work were made until the seventh day. This is blessed and holy, and the former also is blessed and holy. And this one serves with that one 
for sanctification and blessing. And to this, Jacob and his seed, it was granted that they should always be the blessed and holy ones of the first testimony and law, even as he had sanctified and blessed the Sabbath day on the seventh day. He created heaven and earth and everything that he created in six days, and God made the seventh day holy for all his works. Therefore he commanded on its behalf that whoever does any work thereon shall die, and that he who defiles it shall surely die. Wherefore do thou command the children of Israel to observe this day, that they may keep it holy, and not to do thereon any work, and not to defile it, as it is holier than all other days. And whoever profanes it shall surely die, and whoever does thereon any work shall surely die eternally, that the children of Israel may observe this day throughout their generations, and not be rooted out of the land. For it is a holy day, and a blessed day, and every one who observes it, and keeps Sabbath thereon from all his work, will be holy and blessed throughout all days like unto us. That was verse 23 down to verse 31 again from the book of Jubilees, which Moses wrote and is from chapter 2. Now I learned in 2020 in that same book, the book of Jubilees, which again Moses wrote, that it was a blessing for Israel to keep the Sabbath and that everyone wasn't going to keep it. The Gentiles weren't going to keep it. Some of Israel were not going to keep it, but it was a blessing to those who did, which made me understand why things began to really flow and the Lord to really be speaking to me in the spirit back in 2018 because I was honoring the Sabbath. I was taking off time from working during the feast times. And the people around me, they didn't understand it. I mean, you know, some of them even <laughs> got attitudes and, well, what about us? And what about, what about you? What about you? You have same access that I have to this Bible. A lot of people I told, we need to unlearn the things that we were taught in the building because some of these things were forever. Like Jesus said, he didn't come to take away from it. He came to fulfill it. But some of those things... Um, it says from generation to generation, it's an everlasting, ongoing blessing. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. So that's Genesis 9, 14 and 15. When we were seeing the rainbow, and I saw a lot of rainbows. I saw the biggest rainbow over my house I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it was a reminder of God's covenant promise that the water is not to destroy all flesh this next time around. When the Lord said in Joel 2 that he was going to pour out his spirit on all flesh, that's literally what he meant. Yea, surely God will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty pervert judgment. The Almighty is the Holy Spirit. Who have given him a charge over the earth? Or who have disposed the whole world? If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again unto the dust. But then in Ezekiel, it says this, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the south, and drop thy word toward the south, and prophesy against the forest of the south field, and say to the forest of the south, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will kindle a fire in thee, and it shall devour every green tree in thee, and every dry tree. The flaming flame shall not be quenched, and all faces from the south to the north shall be burned therein. <laughs> That's symbolic. 
and all flesh shall see that I the Lord have kindled it, it shall not be quenched. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, they say of me, doth he not speak parables? Like Jesus said, he fulfilled all of it. That was Ezekiel 20, verse 45 through 49. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, I'm going to say it again. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd numbers 27 16 through 17 again another reason why jesus said come to him but also in john 14 he said i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me jesus is the access to the father just as the Holy Spirit is the access to Jesus. Living holy in daily repentance, living righteously, doing the right thing, loving people and treating them as you want to be treated gives you access to Jesus and the Father. Giving you access to the Holy Spirit which brings wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Psalm 65, 1 through 2. The Lord is watching, he's judging, he's listening, and he's answering. Now, I'm going to just do one more about the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the actual Ruach HaKadosh. So, the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost mentioned in Luke 3.16, Luke 11.13, Ephesians 1.13, Ephesians 4.30, 1 Thessalonians 4.8, Titus 3 and 5, 1 Corinthians 6.9, and Jude 1.20. It occurs more than 90 times in the New Testament. So listen to this. It says, Hakadesh is a substantive that means the Holy One, as in Hakadesh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be He. The accent falls at the end, Hakadesh, Ruach Hakadesh, would mean the Spirit of the Holy One, as in a saint. It is not used for the Holy Spirit. Ruach HaKadesh means the Holy Spirit. Just like Har HaKadesh means the Holy Mountain. Amat HaKadesh means the Holy Land. Ayer HaKadesh means the Holy City. And so on. I'll do one more. The Holy Spirit of Promise. The Ruach HaKadesh Kashir Dibur. Holy Spirit of Promise, Ephesians 1.13. I'll read this one last scripture, and maybe we'll do a part two of this. But it says, In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of Promise. It is the word of God. And Jesus was that dwelling amongst us in the flesh. It's the word of God that is the gospel of your salvation. It is what saves you. Knowing it. Believing it. Speaking it. Walking it out. So again, Ruach is breath, wind, spirit. It is also the breath of mouth or nostrils. It is the wind of heaven. It is the storm wind. It is the breath of air. 
It is air and gas from the womb. It is the spirit as that which breathes quickly in animation or agitation, temper, disposition. It is courage. It is, I feel the earthquake. Oh, yep, 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 we have an earthquake. Whoa, I knew it was gonna happen. Whoa. Yeah, because it's been hot. I knew it. <sighs> yeah, that was the big one. It's still rolling. It's so funny that yesterday, me and my friend were talking about the storm and the rain and he said, I'm not afraid of that, just like I'm not afraid of no earthquake. And you guys see how I just sat here so calmly with the shaking because it is the Lord. We just had a 5.5 in Ojai, California. And you know what that means, O-J-A-I, moon. And a noble and decent lamp to enlighten the world. <laughs> I'm in awe of God. So I'll finish it out. A gift and creation of God. This is all the Ruach. God preserves it. It is therefore God's spirit. It departs at death. It is the spirit of God. And look at this. This is number nine. The spirit of God. Again, this is Hebrew word. Ruach. Strong 7307. At the top, it gives Ecclesiastes 8.8. I'm going to read that one before I go. But number nine represents God's judgment, his movement, and his finality. Number nine here says, Jeremiah, it says, Spirit of God, it says, Jeremiah, or any Deuteronomic writer, conception of its activity, probably discredited from abuse by false prophets it says a as inspiring a static state of prophecy we're still talking about the ruach it says spirit as impelling prophets to utter instruction or warning higher and later conception transition probably it says elsewhere like in chronicles second chronicles 15 1 second chronicles 20 14 second chronicles 24 20 it says distinctly in Isaiah 48, 16, it says so of ancient prophets of future prophetic gifts. So that's Zechariah 7, 12, Nehemiah 9, 30, Joel 3, 1. I mean, I could go on and on. This thing is extensive as energy of life. It's all about the Ruach. It says ancient angel of the presence and later Shekinah. Isaiah 63 14, Isaiah 63 9, Psalm 106 33, Psalm 51 13, Zechariah 4 6. But I said I'm going to read Ecclesiastes 8 8 and in this message for today because we got a lot going on. We got this pouring down rain, it's a tropical storm, and we just had an earthquake. <laughs> the Lord is speaking very loudly. It says, There is no man that have power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither have he power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. I'm going to keep on reading because it says, All this I have said and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. And so I saw the wicked buried, who had come and gone from the place of the holy, and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This is also vanity, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not 
before God. We are only to fear God. And like I said, the day that it thundered, August 7, 2019, and shook the ground, whew, my son said, Mom, why are you scared? I said, I'm not scared. He said, yes, you are. I said, I am scared. <laughs> I said, Lord, help me. Forgive me. Forgive me. I should only fear you. And that was the beginning of this beautiful relationship that I am in with him now. And again, I live in daily repentance. You know, I strive to be perfect, but in my flesh, I'm human. And I fall, I make mistakes, but he's there to pick me up and dust me off and set me back on the path because he gave me the gift of grace. He gave me the gift of mercy. He gave me many, many gifts and I'm using them to bring glory to his name and to his kingdom. And I pray this message blessed you. Until the next time, shalom.